On today's show, we're going to be talking about sex, pies, and white lies. Are you intrigued? Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and welcome to Extraordinary Women TV. This is a show where you meet women who have the courage to listen to their hearts, take inspired action, and make a difference. And my guest today is all that. I'm so pleased to have today on the show Monica Parker, award-winning actress, writer, and producer here to talk about her journey, her stories, her inspiration, and uh, get you inspired. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip, and you're going to hear Monica's. Hello, Monica Parker. Hi, Shannon. How are you today? Fantastic. Great. Now, you look lovely in purple, I have to say. Thank you. It's your color. Now, you wear m many hats as I Monica do. Parker. I mean, you're an award-winning writer, producer, <laughs> actress. Wife, mother. Funny woman? Yes, that. That too? Yes. Now, actress and actor, I mean, what do women prefer today? What's, what's, women, the, the, what's the word? I, yeah. You know, I don't care. Actor is good. I mean, actress is fine. A actress sounds sort of cheaper. cheaper. I want to be an actor. Yeah. You want to be I an mean, actor? It just sounds less. I don't know why it does, but it's true. Yeah. Actress. Uh, um, feathers. No, I'm not liking it. I want an actor. Now, you have worked um, for 20 years, or more than 20 years, in, in the entertainment mm -hmm. industry, Long wearing time. these hats, expressing yourself creatively in, in film and TV and, and writing books. Um, and you split your time between Toronto and LA. You do the TOLA shuffle. I do. Hey, what's that like? Mileage. You get lots of <laughs> mileage. What's it like? Um, right. You know, it's not, it's, when I, I was based in LA for 20 something years, and for me, it was about coming to Toronto and keeping my life in Toronto alive. Now we've moved back to Toronto because we have family things that we needed to take care of. And it's you like and your husband, m right? My husband, yeah. myself, yes. And so going back to LA, it's the same thing. I have to spend a lot of time in LA keeping that life alive. So uh, it just feels normal to me. And you have had an opportunity to work with some of the, the greatest actors in Hollywood. I have. Anthony Hopkins is one of them. Tell me, what was it like to work with Anthony Hopkins? I wrote him a letter at the end of this movie, The Road to Wellville, and I said to him, you're like a chocolate truffle. You're deep, you're dark, and you're sweet. And that's what it was like working with. He was the nicest, loveliest, most giving man. It was fantastic. Because, you know, after watching The Silence of the Lambs, you have a different idea of Anthony Hopkins. You know, his character. Mm. You know, maybe is that, is that the drawback of being an actor? I mean, you can carry your character around uh, with you uh, and people still associate that? I mean, I think if you get an iconic role like Silence of right. the Lambs, I think that that sort of is embedded. I, I think if you're on a series for any length of time where mm -hmm. you're playing Dexter, <laughs> people might confuse you with a killer. Yeah. Um, you know, I've played so many therapists and hookers, so that should confuse everyone. <laughs> um, I, and you know what? You go on to the next film, and he he's such a consummate. I mean, remains of the day. Right. I always think that nobody played a repressed butler better than him. I mean, you take pieces of yourself, and you bring them to the material, but the material is the thing that rules. So I think people are smarter than that. They know that Anthony Hopkins doesn't go around eating people with the ante. <laughs> That's my guess. Fava beans and Chianti? Yes. But he's a, yes. a wonderful man, and when I met him, I was deadly sick on my first day of this film. And I saw him standing in a corner, and I was playing an English woman, which was fine for me, but not when he was standing watching. And I had a fever, and I was thinking, okay, I'm going to my death very slowly. Um, and I did what I did, and afterwards when we were introduced, and, and I was speaking in my normal accent of the day, and he said, oh, you're not English. And I said, you thought I was? I love you. And he said, no, I really did. Um, so I felt like I had done my job. And you worked with uh, uh, one of the honeys in Hollywood, John Cusack. He's so lovely. Yeah. He's, he's just a nice guy. He's funny. He's charming. He's interesting. I mean, he's his own guy. He's not a Hollywood guy. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony Hopkins is not a Hollywood guy. I don't know too many Hollywood guys. I mean, I think that's a mis another misnomer about Hollywood. Yeah, we were talking about that uh, mm. prior to the show, um, that people almost love to hate LA or it's not such a it's not so cool to say I love living in LA I think they're jealous yeah. it's warm <laughs> um, palm trees it, you palm know trees are. I because I lived in LA so long and I, I I always said to our son who was born in LA I used to say to him you may have been born here but you're not from here your parents are Canadian so get over it um, and but at the same time I've met the most wonderful amazing hard-working people in Los Angeles and as I said to you yesterday you attract what you attract if you're looking for superficial you'll find it if you're looking for depth you'll find it if you're looking for normal which is what I crave I mean normal which is really hard to find anywhere I don't care what you do what but is normal anyway authentic I, yeah. I don't even mean normal authentic just authentic yeah grounded normal funny um, earthy genuine you can find that anywhere. You can even find that in L.A. Shocking. And you worked on The X-Files. I mean, I you worked on in so many uh, productions, but The X-Files. I, mean, I did the pilot. I love it. Okay. I did the pilot, and the pilot was different because every right. it was the most tense show I have ever worked on because they, they were worried about getting the tone right, and people hadn't sort of settled into their roles yet, so it felt um, like hard work. And I remember the weather was terrible. It was shot in Vancouver, so the weather was raining. Um, and there was a lot of outdoor stuff. But at the same time, you knew it was a hit. You just knew. So, that was good. Now, one of the things that you have done, and you've, you've done really well, is taken the issue of weight and made it funny. It's a fine line making weight funny, because there's cheap jokes about funny, right. and I don't do those. And one of the worst jobs I ever, ever, ever had in my career was uh, everyone I knew was starting Second City. And I was friends with all of that, the, the world of the Second City TV show. That, those were my yeah. peers and my friends. And I got a call that CBS was coming to town and that they were doing the Bobby Vinton show. I was very young. And all I heard was CBS, American TV show. I don't think I heard anything else. And they brought me in for, uh, in for an interview and they said, oh, we think you're really funny, we'd love to have you. And I remember going back to the SCTV people and saying, I'm out of here, I have an American show. The biggest regret of my life was the Bobby Vinton show because when I showed up there was this giant polka outfit with giant <laughs> sleeves and giant padded shoes and pigtails with a, a you know one of those Valkyrie hats with horns and that my that was my outfit which was hor horrible and I had to put that on and then my job was to polka out every guest star and then they would make a fat joke about me and it was brutal and I was so I had never ever sold myself short not ever and suddenly I was doing a show where I was the butt of jokes and I I um, stopped I said to them I can't do this and they said well but you've signed a contract and I said but you didn't tell me this was my job you told me I would be doing sketches and I would be doing this and they said to me the producers they lied oh I know that's a terrible shock but they did they said well we'll give you all these sketches and things well they they did but they were from people who didn't show up like Phyllis Diller um, and so I kept doing this and at the end of the season I said I'm not coming back next season and I went to Hawaii with my husband and I got a phone call saying CBS had picked up the show and they wanted the show to be exactly the same and I said I'm not coming back so they offered it to John Candy to wear my outfit with my pigtails and my dress and he called me and I said so what'd you say he said I said no I said, of course you said no. So that was the greatest lesson for me was to always know what it is you're getting into. And never since have I ever done that. So for me, being a big woman in LA has been a real, um, it was a challenge in the beginning. And then it just became, this is who I am, take it or leave it. You know. And in some ways, whatever your 
whatever you are, whether you're tall, whether you're short, I mean, my philosophy of life is to make the best of who you are. That is the ultimate gift I can give to myself and to anyone else who, who, who listens. Is, there must be a danger to self-deprecating humor. Listen, I think some fat humor is funny. I make yeah. fun of myself. But it's different when I make fun of me. Um, I, I say that when I was a baby, um, I was born, I weighed six and a half pounds, and one hour later I weighed 62 pounds. I have no idea what was in that milk. Well, that's me uh, making fun of me, and I think that's totally funny and fine. I think it's different when it is about humiliating somebody. Right. That's different. There's a, there's a line there. Mm, don't cross that line. Well, you know, Monica, we're going to take a quick break, uh, and that means it's my Good to Know Minute, and I know you've got a great success for my viewers, so jump right in there. Okay. My um, Good to Know Minute is one word, ask. If you need information, if you need support, if you need money, if you need entree, if you need a friend, ask for it. And if someone says no, ask someone else. Just keep asking, and somebody will come through for you. Well, thanks for that, and that is absolutely good to know. Ask. So I'm going to ask you to stay right there. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with award-winning actress, writer, producer, Monica Parker. Well, before we return uh, to my guest, I have an event announcement. Now, International Women's Day is just around the corner. You're going to want to know about this event. It's called We Move Forward 2012. It is taking place on the island of women, Isla Mujeres, Mexico, uh, March 8th through the 10th. Um, there's an incredible lineup of speakers uh, inspiring women such as actress uh, Wendy Crewson, author Melissa Fung, spice goddess Belle Arneson, among other speakers, storytellers, healers. Uh, it's going to be quite an inspiring uh, three days, so please join us. Just fly to Cancun, take a 15-minute ride, ferry over to the island. It's really easy to get to. Uh, Extraordinary Women TV is a proud media partner. I'm going to be there. I'm really looking forward to it. More information on the website can be found at, um, or more information can be found on the website at wemoveforward2012.com, or you can visit my website at Extraordinary Women TV under the event uh, .com, under the event section uh, for more information. Would love to see you there. International Women's Day, and that was, of course, the video that we saw was uh, during the break was uh, Isla Mujeres, Mexico. Well, I'm speaking with uh, award-winning actress, writer, producer, Monica Parker, who's here uh, in the studio today. Now, Monica, on television, um, you've worked on, an, you've been a guest on a number of shows, mm -hmm. from Murder, She Wrote, Who's the Boss, ER, <laughs> The X-Files, of course, we talked about, SCTV, but you've also hosted more than, you know, three of your own series, including yeah. Evening Out, uh, Evening Out, Sweet City Woman, and There's Got to Be a Better Way. Yes, Sweet City Woman was part of City TV way back when. Oh, yeah. And it was an exercise show. I had an exercise show. And it was really funny. Yeah. Um, at Christmas time, I would um, decorate the tree with chicken legs and donuts. They hang. Um, and I was gifted with a body that could do the splits and do backbends and weird things. Gilda Radner used to come on my show all the time. Uh, Dan Aykroyd was my voiceover guy. Dan Aykroyd. Unbelievably. Wow. And um, I used to have guests on the show. I would do the exercise parts, and then I would have therapists and doctors and, and uh, everyone on this show uh, who had an opinion on fat or weight or thinness or whatever it was. But in my case, it was always about <coughs> fat. And um, I had one doctor who came on the show who said, if you took all the fat storage of all the overweight people in North America, you could heat and light New York City. So I told him I'd be happy to do a street or be an auxiliary, uh, you know, generator whenever necessary. I don't think that man's practicing anymore. <laughs> now you have worked, as we said earlier before the break, with a number of uh, stellar um, actors in Hollywood, uh, including Sir Anthony Hopkins, but Michael Douglas, Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, Gina Rollins, uh, Gordon Pinsent, and Kim Cattrall. Yes. I, I, I what did you do with Kim Cattrall? 
I introduced her to one of her husbands. Um, oh, Kim is a very dear friend of mine. We, we, we've just been friends for 20 some odd years. I'm not sure that Kim and I work together. My husband is a dress designer and he made, uh, he made one of her wedding dresses. Um, so we've just been friends forever. And I suppose we have worked together. I'm trying to think on what. I have no idea anymore. Now, you have something um, that you've been, um, your, your, one of your latest projects is a one-woman show yes. called Sex Pies and a Few White Lies. Going back to my intro. <laughs> yes, it's true. Um, what was Tell that? me about it. Well, for years I talked about writing a one-person show and, and coming back to Canada, the best thing that happened was winter. So I didn't want to go out, so I sat at my desk and I wrote. And I wrote and I wrote and I created this one-woman show, which is about sex, it's about pies, and definitely a few white lies, but it's really a memoir, and it's really about my journey um, being a big woman, and it's funny, and it has some moments where it's sad. It's incredibly um, honest, and um, which was my goal, was to not hold back and to really reveal everything I felt about being me. Uh, and, and my fight, my fight to come to terms with acceptance and have others accept themselves, which is the message of the show. And this is a, a universal message. I mean, Definitely. you're really touching hearts through it. It's been incredibly well received. I did it in Los Angeles, I did it in San Diego and Newfoundland. And it has, the response to it, it's new, so I'm just beginning my world domination tour. Um, it's, it's definitely relatable. I think there, there are, uh, people can't help but relate to me because I'm so deeply flawed, so I make everybody else feel better about being them. <laughs> it's my theory. What is in your heart to create? Wow. Truth, grace. Grace is, grace is the word that I always think that life throws all of us curves, balls, and how we handle them is all we have, is our response to the bad things that happen um, is what makes it, makes outcomes successful. So for me, it's about grace. Now, something um, that we had talked about earlier was um, uh, that for you, you feel that you have a desire to inspire other people to live their dreams. I do. And what did you mean by that? We have, you know, it's a cliche, but we have this one life. And, and, and for me, uh, I think that we need, we have a choice every morning when we get up to look at this day as opportunity. And for me, I feel very, very blessed. I was born with a very optimistic outlook on life. I mean, if the toast falls on the floor, it's going to fall butter side up. I, I, that's how I perceive me, butter side up. And butter side up. Yeah. And I, I think that every situation, you know, there are people who spend an enormous amount of time in the negative place. I, I don't know what that gives anybody except more negativity. And that is not at all me. I try to find really a gift in every bad thing that happens. When a friend or a f member of your family dies, I think it's the gift for you to remind you to live your life every day, to remember them. I, I, I just think we need to spend more time in the blessing part of our life. Was there something in your life that made you wake up to that? The need of to really um, live life in the moment and I genuinely think I'm blessed. I've always thought I was blessed. Mm -hmm. I have a vast network of the most amazing friends. I think f friends are our net worth. I do. So I, I believe in friendship. I believe you give to your friends and they give back to you. In the same way that if you water a plant, it grows. I think when you water something, you make it grow. And that's what... All, that, that's me. I mean, I just, I'm not interested in putting anything negative into the universe. It, you know, you've been working in the entertainment industry for a long time, and there are, are many people who 
find the entertainment uh, industry really uh, not inspiring or very difficult and challenging. I mean, what's been your experience? Uh, the exact opposite. Yeah. Uh, we are here to entertain. Mm -hmm. we, we are creative. Uh, um, creativity is my soul. I always say if you had to be on a desert island and you had to have only, you could only, I used to say you could only have one thing, but then I realized lipstick was really important. <laughs> so after taking lipstick, and then there's a third thing, because I, 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 as you get old, I need tweezers. Um, as, but the other thing is crayons. And if I get, wouldn't have crayons, it's bark. I mean, I, as long as you can. So you use a lipstick? No, I need my lipstick. Don't take my lipstick away. Because um, I will only have one, you know. Well, with those berries, if I'm on that island. Um, but, but what I'm saying is that, you know, for me, if you're locked up someplace dark, if you can create, whether it's in your mind or yeah. whether if you, you, you know, you, you're good. That's, that's, our imaginations are our televisions of our brain. So, it's not a bad thing. What does a day in the life of Monica Parker look like? Chocolate. <laughs> um, a day in the life of Monica Parker, what does it look like? I, I get up, I, I, um, I get up, I start my day with something, seriously, I meditate every morning. I do something holistic, like I start my day by eating really good clean food that lasts till 10 a.m. and then I fall deeply off the wagon and some days I get it back, some days I don't. I'm here. Um, I, I always do some exercise. Mm -hmm. I write pretty much every morning interspersed with a lot of phone calls because I need distractions and I have a short attention span. But I write really intensely in 10 minute spurts and then I make a call. Um, and, I, and I write in cafes or I write with the TV on, which is really sort of interesting, but it makes me focus. All the sort of blah, blah, blah around me makes me have to focus. And to so, shut it all out mm -hmm. to focus on yeah. your creation. And I find that really, lots of people, you know, people have different ways of concentrating and in schools, they want you to shut up and not have distractions. And I, I think because people learn in so many different ways, and I, my son, I, I saw it with my kid, that they used to say to him, oh, he's always sort of drifting off or doodling. And I'd say, how does he do um, on his test? Well, well, really well. And I said, what do you care? Um, you know, it doesn't matter to me how you absorb as long as you figure it out for yourself. And so I'm a happy camper if I'm distracted. I have to focus then. So, you know, Monica, I know that creativity, as you said, is really important to you, um, and you've created a lot, a number of, um, you know, uh, many projects in film and TV and, and writing. Um, where do you get your inspiration? And do you, do you on purpose seek it? You get inspiration from a bad you? couch. You know, that makes you laugh. You get inspiration from something beautiful. I, I think inspiration is to be had everywhere. You either take the funny from it, or you take the heart from it, but I, 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 everything to me has the possibility to be creative. I, I don't, I'm wired to think creatively. I, I don't know how not to. So, um, you know, uh, when I, I, my son who's brilliant in math, um, and I'm not, and so when I couldn't sleep at night when he was young, I'd say, come and tell me a math story. And he'd start talking about math and I'd go, <laughs> like that. Because it's so, when it just put me out. Whereas if I'm doing anything creative, because I have a slightly active brain and 3 a.m. is my power hour, much to my husband's dismay. But that's when I'm at my best. I mean, I, I've had a few hours rest and my brain is wired and, and I am come out with you know movies, full shows, whatever it is that has to happen. And I'm also solving most of the world's problems, my husband's problems. I could solve your problems. You, I'll put you on the list. I mean, it's, a very, it's a very busy period of time for me between three and five. Well, Monica, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. And uh, when we come back, we'll pick it up. We'll take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, more with Monica Parker, award-winning actress, writer, and producer. So stay where you are. Welcome back to the show. I'm speaking with award-winning writer, <laughs> actress, producer, Monica Parker. 
Um, in her latest project, or the one you have on the go now, is uh, your one-woman show, uh, Sex Pies and a Few White Lies. Well done. Yeah, was that well done? Yes. But your next project is even more intriguing. It's getting wasted. <laughs> yes, but spelled W-A-I-S-T-E-D. It's my life. Um, it's a book, and it's a, a, a humorous memoir um, of what it's like to live your life on a diet from the time you were three. And um, it's true. And, and um, I, I felt that I, pretty much every chapter is a diet that I've been on, how much it cost, how much weight I lost, and how much weight I gained when I stopped the diet. And um, I don't believe that diets work. I think they work, as long as you're on one. But the minute you try to live your good life, any life, it'll come back. So I don't do that anymore. And, and also, just to give me credibility, the New York Times had a huge 12-page article two weeks ago that said the very same thing. They don't work, so why bother? Um, and I do a lot of speaking about this because I, I think if you need to lose weight, want to lose weight, you should lose weight. But what if, and what if it doesn't work for you? What if you can't keep it off? Are you supposed to hate yourself? And that's my message. Don't You have to love who you are as you are. And um, so this book is um, a very powerful uh, piece of writing for me. Um, I think it's brutally honest. I was a spa re reject. I was thrown out of a spa because they found candies in the toe of my boot. Now, I don't believe that housekeeper was cleaning the room when she found them, okay? I think she was a spy. Um, and they were upset that I stole a grapefruit off a tree outside my door. I mean, it's not fair. So, it, it's funny. It's um, painful. I find pain extremely humorous when I'm writing about it, not when I'm living it. And um, it's also about the amazing husband that I have who is the first and only person in my entire life who never judged me for being me. And he's this beautiful, handsome French Canadian who I've been with since there were dinosaurs on the earth. So the message is, you are good enough if you believe you're good enough. And he seemed to believe I was good enough. So he taught me to believe that I was good enough. Well, you know, the world is looking at Kate Middleton. Uh, we look alike, um, don't you think? Oh, yeah, very much so. Mostly from yeah. the back. Well, the world is looking at her, um, you know, and her and her dieting, and uh, it's been really uh, interesting to watch, uh, you know, her journey. And she's already thin. She was thin. She wasn't terribly heavy to begin with. How would you like to be the queen's future daughter-in-law? I mean, you you are who you are. If I was the queen's daughter-in-law, I would have gained sixty pounds. I mean, that's just the stress release that mm. you know. Obviously, her thing is she gets thin. I, I'm sure it'll all even out as she seems like she's a graceful, beautiful, beautiful young woman. So. Exercise. Uh, I was just reading um, yesterday um, uh, in one of the newspapers that more and more. Uh, I mean, experts are saying that yeah, dieting is not necessarily working, but it's really exercise is what's key. I, I actually agree. I walk mm -hmm. every day. Um, I, I dance. You dance? I oh, dance. wow. I, yeah. I, I can't go to an exercise class. I, I, I've done enough of those in my life to know that I hate them. I mean, you make, they make me feel like a hamster on some kind of treadmill. I'm not good with that. I've had trainers. I'm not good with that either. I don't like being told what to do. Um, so I dance, and you know, I put on Peter Allen, you know, dance down to Rio, whatever it is, disco, just things that you can't not move to. And I dance every day. So Monica, of, of all of these projects that you've done, including your dancing, uh, and these, you know, many hats that you wear, uh, of all of the projects that you have created, what has been the one that has touched your heart the most? The next one. Um, you know, I have to, I have to say my, my one woman show and or my book because they're true expressions of my response to, to the gift of life and my, my take, which is usually funny. And I, I say it took 101 humiliations to become me. And for that, I'm grateful. What's next? Um, I don't know. Uh, some 3 a.m. in the morning will tell me. I, well, you know, I'm, I'm writing a, a half hour 
sitcom. I'm I'm producing a TV series. I'm I'm you know always thinking <laughs> is what I'm doing. Always creating. It, it, uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. I actually, yeah. I'm, I'm designing a line of. Uh, I was a dress designer in my baby days. Um, I, I come from a long line of. Uh, my entire family somehow has been in that business. My mother was a couturier. My husband's a dress designer. I was a dress designer. That was what, what I, I learned to do. That was my education. Acting, I fell into. That was completely an accident. And um, So there's no dream to be an actor? None. It just happened. Uh, there was a dream to express myself. Right. I, I, yeah. I think that that was my dream. And I didn't, you know, and how you express yourself is whatever comes up. I mean, expressing myself is definitely important to me. I, I said to you yesterday, I have an opinion on absolutely everything. It isn't necessarily the right opinion, but I have an opinion. And um, I'm not a very gray person. <laughs> Black, white. So um, des I'm designing a line of clothing called Full Bloom um, for plus size women, because I don't think that plus size women want to look like, and forgive me, Kate Smith, wherever you are, but we don't want to look like you. Um, so I believe that you can be glamorous at any weight and, and elegant and whatever, fun. If you had any advice for uh, young girls, young women who have a dream of being in the entertainment business, um, being an actress, a writer, right. a producer, having that Hollywood, Hollywood stars in their eyes, what would be your advice to them? Go for it. My advice is don't ever let anyone tell you no. Don't let anyone, never let anyone tell you you're not good enough. N don't listen to people who tell you you can't do things. Because if you listen to them, you won't be able to do things. You have to listen to your heart. And your heart says you want something. And I'm a real believer that the keys to success in life start with belief. They start with belief and then they go from there to perseverance. And then what you learn to do is to become a fighter. And I always say, if you can't go through a door and a window isn't there, rip up a floorboard. Find your way to live your dream. Well, Monica, if uh, anyone wants more information about you, um, they can visit your website uh, at monicaparkerproductions.com. Right. Is that right? Okay. Uh, and um, you have there listed your speaking engagements, I believe. I do. E yeah, events. Uh, anything new coming up is posted there, so. Uh, oh, I thought yeah. you were asking me if there was oh, more. Oh, yeah, no. Because I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's all there. So it's a great website, by the way. I have to Thank tell you, you, I really love it. Thank you. Um, but I've really enjoyed this time uh, you, speaking too. with you and uh, hearing about your journey and uh, your universal message being the universal every woman. Love it. Thanks. Are you hungry? You want to go out to eat? I'm very hungry. Let's go, go out have some eat. pies. Good idea. Thanks again. Thank you. Well, for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, you can visit my website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Lots of places to find me. Special thanks to my friends and family for your ongoing support. And well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope the story has inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.